to the LAMC 2013. I'm Catalina Maria Johnson, and it's a pleasure to be here on behalf of Beat Latino and Gozamos with one of my heroes and one of, I think, uh, Latin and Mexican music's heroes and electronica's heroes. It's a pleasure to be here with Camilo Lara, a.k.a. the Mexican Institute of Sound. Camilo. Thank you, Catalina. You're Thanks. being so generous with me. <laughs> it's, no, I mean, your projects are amazing, not just your musical projects, but your history as a, a producer and a collectionist. And I've heard a lot about your collection of right. that, that was sort of the start of your musical creation. Tell yeah. us a little bit more about that. Well, I, uh, I got a back problem because I carry a lot of vinyls. Um, and in Spanish, it's having a disco malo. Mm -hmm. So it's a paradox because I had a bad disc on my <laughs> back of carrying so many discs. records on discs. <laughs> Um, I have a lot of vinyls and I've been buying vinyls and CDs and A tracks and all kind of formats forever and it's crazy it's uh, <laughs> it's really crazy I have a full house like with thousands and thousands I must have like more than 45,000 vinyls 45,000 uh, yeah. wow and so um, when you create do you go to the collection, or or is it something new to the collection? And you're like, oh, I have to. How how does how does your creative process well, work? Well, it is very important because I sampler a lot, and most of the vinyls I have, I must say, like half of it is uh, really obscure records that I've been collecting for sampling. Um, Any areas in particular, uh, or all over? Yeah, With forty five thousand, yeah, you can yeah, from, go anywhere. From, uh, from kids singing to like uh, weird records that were produced in Mexico in the 50s, 60s, 70s. Um, so I use that a lot to get sounds or to get ideas. And I'm a, uh, uh, the music I do is kind of a collage, so everything is on top of it. Uh, so sometimes I start uh, music with a melody or uh, rhythm that I found there, and um, I start building from there. So it is it is very important. I use the, I use my collection. I'm I'm not this kind of guy that buys the latest, like the Beatles mono edition. Or I, I I just buy weird, like crappy records that I like. What's the weirdest, crappiest record that you think is the best undiscovered? <laughs> I don't know. There are so many. I, I mean, uh, there was this period of time uh, in Mexico on the 60s where uh, boot bootleg records were huge and uh, they didn't even uh, borrow the original music so they just recreated and doing it uh, and it was beautiful there are some amazing versions of great songs and and uh, those are really hard to find but uh, they are great they were produced in Tepito in Mexico City and and there's a whole uh, Tepito. Tepito is a. It's, yeah, it's like El Barrio Tepito. It's, it's a barrio that has like a, you can find anything there. It's a, it's it's kind of a the, in a way the heart of Mexico City. This place where everything is together, like poor and rich and dangerous and easy, and uh, it's a, such a magical place. Wow, and uh, you know of all your uh, of you, of all your musical creations. Uh, the one that you did for the bicentennial, Suave Patria, right. that, that grabbed my attention because it it had a definite theme and it had you know definite socio political uh, titles. Uh, how did that come about? And then tell us about the video in the Socalo. I want to hear. Yeah, about yeah. That. Well, the the Suave Patria is uh, an experiment I did uh, because I was commissioned to do the bicentennial. Uh, music for a big parade that was happening the day of the bicentennial celebration. So I did. Uh, I composed some music for 5,000 people performing it, like people from the streets that were doing sounds, and it was a huge, ambitious project. I spent like a year, probably one year, uh, rehearsing uh, in a in an uh, 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 like uh, where the planes what are they called the hangar yeah the hangars yeah, hangars um, full of like two or three thousand people uh, wow. every week um, and the result is that it's an album that is 45 minutes of music and it's it, it, it tried to show Mexicanity in a way like the the deep deep bone of Mexico and um, 
uh, through some basic concepts, uh, which is uh, territorio, territory, uh, and, and, and all the, the, the big issues that the Constitution of Mexico uh, protects. So, so it was a very ambitious and probably was the, the beginning of my political uh, recording career. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting because now what you just said uh, made me think of the movie project that you've been affiliated with. Right. And because it also deals with uh, Mexicanidad and right. concepts. Was that before Suave Patria after, or, or no, simultaneously? It, it was uh, before. After uh, we did uh, Hecho en Mexico, which is a film uh, uh, that it gets a little bit of um, the idea of the movie Hecho en Mexico was to, to have a, a positive side on, on Mexico. Having like all this bad, bad reputation and press on narcos, bloodbaths, uh, killing. Like, uh, I guess the only good ambassadors for Mexico are the artists and the people who are doing creative music, creative, uh, uh, creative things. So it was very good to to have a documentary like that that, that can uh, do a portrait of how amazing is Mexico on this side. Um, uh, we did that like a, a year and a half ago, and after that, I did a new record called Politico, mm -hmm. which is definitely my statement on on political. And it it probably comes now that I'm thinking, it probably is an evolution of what I've been doing in uh, the movie Hecho en Mexico and, and and the Suave Patria EP. Now, you you said the beginning of your political music career yeah. are you is that the direction you're moving in do you think that that's well um, it's, it's, the evolution now that you're yeah, like tapa in which you, i guess in a way i guess uh, i've been getting more political and uh the reason it's called my last record is called political is because it's a uh, it's more political it's not it's not a guerrilla album it's not a fighting album it's a political album it's more about conciliation and uh about uh what what we should do as a as a society, and what we can do without without the big monsters of politicians. Um, so I guess I guess yeah. In a way, uh, I started a career as an artist, uh, being in love with Mexico, and the 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 time passes, and I I have become more uh, angry and more uh, upset with my country. So probably I start with a love letter and I finish with a with a restraining order. <laughs> <laughs> um, and after the restraining order, maybe uh, probably I would call the the Swiss Institute of Sound, <laughs> the, <Swiss laughs> the Institute. Dutch Institute of Sound. <laughs> I don't know. I hope not because I I, I think uh, I li I live in a beautiful country full of uh, amazing people that doesn't reflect what Mexico is now. You know? And uh, I guess, I believe countries are societies and the society is beautiful. The, 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 the rest is pretty crappy. <laughs> but I, I do think your music, Hecho en Mexico, and the music uh, that you've created, and even that experience of the uh, Suave Patria, 5,000 you know, artistic souls coming together, mm. certainly that's trans that has transformative power. I yeah, think. I mean, I think art is the, that's the, the role of art in these days. Like, it's the only good uh, glue for society, it's the only thing that can change the, the conscience of the people, and it's uh, the, the, the way to, to act as a, as a society. So, so, I guess the good example is when you, you have a building and uh, it can be a horrible building or a beautiful building. And if it's beautiful, it can change your whole neighborhood. So music should be like that. It should, be, it should help your society, your barrio, your, uh, the where, the where you live to, to get better. I think you've done that. So thank, thank you very you. much. And thank, <laughs> thank you for you. your time. Thank you. And can't wait to see you in Chicago again. Oh, I hope to go very soon. Gracias. Gracias.